In this video, we'll be looking at the coagulation of latex. Latex is that milky substance that comes from the rubber tree from which we make natural rubber. Latex consists of numerous particles known as rubber particles. A rubber particle is actually not the foundation of rubber. It's what's inside the particle that makes up rubber. The rubber particle has a protein membrane which is negatively charged. This is very important. And inside the membrane, we have the rubber polymers. Rubber polymers are known as polyisoprene. This is what polyisoprene looks like. And the monomer for polyisoprene is of course isoprene. As you can see, isoprene consists of two carbon-carbon double bonds. This is what enables it to undergo addition polymerization to become a long chain of polyisoprene. So how do we go from that milky substance to solid rubber? This is through a process known as coagulation. Rubber particles have a negatively charged membrane. Therefore, whenever they come into close proximity, they will repel and they will never actually collide. This prevents them from colliding. Every time they come near, the negative charge causes them to repel and they repel. So this will prevent the collision of the rubber particles. If we leave latex in the open air for a long period of time, what will happen is bacteria from the air will start to enter the latex and will start producing lactic acid. These acid particles, importantly, will dissociate to form hydrogen ions, which are positively charged. These hydrogen ions are then going to go and neutralize the negative charge of the protein membrane. And now we no longer have negatively charged membranes. Instead, we have neutral membranes. And when particles are on course to collide with each other, there is nothing left to prevent them from colliding. They are not going to repel anymore since the negative charge has been neutralized. So what will happen is they will come into contact and they will actually collide. And when they collide, what happens is the protein membrane is going to break. And once it is broken, the rubber polymer inside, the polyisoprene chains inside the rubber particle are going to come out. They are no longer encased in the protein membrane. And once all the polymers are out, the polymer chains are going to clump together. They are going to come together and this is what causes the coagulation of latex. Now, what if we didn't want this to happen? All we need to do is find a way to get rid of the pesky hydrogen ions that are dissociated from the acid particles. And we can do this through the process of neutralization. All we have to do is simply add a few drops of weak alkali, such as ammonia solution. Once we add alkali, what we're going to get is hydroxide ions are going to dissociate and they're going to be floating around in the colloid as well. And when the bacteria actually produces the acid and hydrogen ions are present, what's going to happen is the hydrogen ions are going to be neutralized by the hydroxide ion. And therefore, the hydrogen ion has no chance to neutralize the negative charge on the protein membrane of the rubber particle. This will ensure that the rubber particles remain negative and will continue to repel and will not collide with each other and break. If you think you're getting value from this video so far, please do me a favor and hit that like button. Really goes a long way. Thank you very much for doing that. Natural rubber has many desirable characteristics, such as it is elastic, it is a good insulator of electricity. However, its use is also limited due to some not very good characteristics, such as it will melt when it is exposed to heat, it is very soft, and although it is elastic, its elasticity can be improved. And this is done through a process known as vulcanization. But that's for another video. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did, please do hit the like button. Thank you very much for doing that. I'll be producing at least one video a week. See you guys in the next video.